Hey guys, it's Dr. Jessel Barkajani. Today's video is gonna be on brain inflammation and depression. We're gonna go into the mechanism, we're gonna go into what's happening underneath the surface, we'll go into some of the newer research on the topic and what we can do about it. All right, before we dive in, smash that like button, it really helps. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications of future comments. Also, let me know your experience with depression and mood issues and things that you've done that have helped and worked in the past. All right, let's dive in. So brain inflammation and depression. There's a new article, new um, study that came out by the British Medical Journal last week. I'll put the link down below. Using essentially ibuprofen and various NSAIDs and aspirin to reduce inflammation and having a significant impact on depression. So what's happening here? What's the mechanism? Well, it's really interesting. I'm gonna break it down for you all here. Here's your brain. And what we have here is we have what's called our blood-brain barrier. So this ba imagine the protective barrier that wraps around the brain like this. This is our blood-brain barrier. And this is known as astrocytes, okay? Astrocytes. Okay, this is our blood-brain barrier, just for, for slang there. And then we have what are called microglial cells, all right? And we'll just kind of do an abbreviation here. These little guys, we'll just call them MG. And MG, when these things are activated, what they do is they can actually stimulate and increase something called glutamate. And we'll just put glutamate in G. And glutamate's an excitotoxin. It's very stimulatory to the neurons. And so when we have little neurons over here trying to work, here's your little neuron, it can affect the neuronal health. It can create a lot of inflammation, a lot of damage to the brain. Some of the side effects could be brain fog, some could be depression, mood-related issues. And then of course, you know, one of the byproducts of all this is we're gonna have oxidative stress, right? We're gonna have oxidative stress. So this is, this is kind of the big mechanism that's happening in here. So we understand here a couple of little tidbits, 30 to 60% of the antidepressants don't work. So the fact that we're seeing mechanisms outside of the typical SSRI or tricyclic antidepressants, there's something else going on and we know inflammation in the brain is a big, is a big kind of next step. We know that and a lot of the newer medications are working on brain inflammation. Probably a lot of side effects, remember, I'm not endorsing taking NSAIDs or aspirin and things like that for depression. What I'm saying is they get to the underlying solution. NSAIDs also kill 20,000 people a year according to the New England Journal of Medicine, so you gotta be careful with that. What are we doing? We're activating immune cells, right? We talked about aspirin can battle depression, newer research on that topic, not addressing the root cause. There are more natural and herbal supports like curcumin, resveratrol, uh, potentially CBD, obviously diet and lifestyle changes, fish oil, that would be more natural and not have the potential side effects. So you gotta be careful. Antidepressants on average don't work long term. They're a good band-aid short term if someone's in a bind, but they don't get to the root cause. Now, where does the inflammation coming from? Food's a big one, right? So gluten, casein, right? Inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids, the refined vegetable oils, and nut and seed oils that are highly omega-6 can promote more inflammation. Um, again, pesticides and various chemicals in the food, that kind of falls under toxins, right? But we talked about gluten and non, essentially foods that are inflammatory, higher in toxins, and have higher hormones, uh, essentially, are, are, and low in nutrition as well. So those kind of foods. So anything not on your typical paleo template, so your processed standard American diet, lots of grains, lots of excessive high casein dairy, milks and cheese and things like that, raw and healthier sources may be okay for some people. Refined sugars and excess carbs too. Bacteria could be an issue, what does that mean? That could be things like H. pylori, SIBO, bacterial overgrowth. These could all drive inflammation in the brain. A lot of what's called our LPS, these are lipopolysaccharides, and these are like the toxic byproducts that come from these gram-negative bacteria. So here's your bacteria, and you have this outer layer that looks like a little sunbeam kind of coming off of it, and this is known as LPS or endotoxin for short. Endotoxin and LPS do the same thing. Okay, they equal one another. So that can be a stressor. Parasites, right, crypto, blasto, anything that creates inflammation in the gut, inflammation in the gut, 
when you start breaking down the, the gut barrier, the gut barrier can then drive problems with the blood brain barrier. So the gut barrier can create problems with the blood brain barrier and then vice versa with the blood brain as well. There's data showing that, hey, if you have inflammation in your brain from head trauma, that can actually cause gut issues as well. So we gotta get to the root issue here. A blood sugar can be a problem. Up and down swings of blood sugar can activate microglial cells. Also, getting exposed to things like MSG or aspartame can also stimulate glutamate or can, it can have an, exos, an excitotoxin effect similar to glutamate. So blood sugar swings going up and down can really cause immune stress. So if here's your blood sugar like this, we don't want your blood sugar to go up and down. If here's the healthy blood sugar zone, we want your blood sugar to kind of oscillate in that zone through healthy proteins, carbs, and the right amount of fats. Imbalanced blood sugar, we kind of go like this. Our blood sugar goes like this. It goes up and down, up and down, and then where it drops down low, we have a lots of uh, adrenaline, right? Adrenaline, cortisol, right? So all kinds of different stress hormones happen when that occurs. Hormonal issues for sure. Estrogen has a major effect on the monoamine oxidase. Monoamine oxidase or monoamines are essentially serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, adrenaline, etc. And these compounds, um, hormones have an effect on preventing the breaking down of these chemicals. So healthy estrogens, healthy progesterone will have an impact on GABA, will have an impact on these hormones breaking down. Um, breaking down too fast. That's one of the major side effects when your hormones go out of balance, like with estrogen dominance or being on birth control pills, you can see a lot of mood issues and depression. Um, so estrogen dominance is a big one for women. Of course, low testosterone for guys too can also cause mood issues too. Testosterone is very important for activating the frontal cortex. And then toxins, like I already mentioned, right? We want an anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense, low-toxin diet. When you start going more standard American, processed omega-6, processed refined sugar and carbs, we're gonna get more toxins in there from the hormones, from the pesticides, from the glyphosate, uh, from the antibiotics. So not good will affect your gut and then will cause blood brain barrier issues. So what can you do? Clean diet, right? Get the crap out of your diet, get the toxins out of your diet. Really support good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. Omega-3 is pro-anti-inflammatory uh, while omega-6 is more inflammatory. Um, we gotta look at the gut, do some testing on the gut, see what's happening in the gut. If we have gut barrier issues, that's gonna create brain barrier issues. Gotta look at the adrenals. They're part of your stress handling system. Gotta look at the female hormones. Should also take a look deeper at your neurotransmitters. We'll run organic acid tests to look at vanomandolate, homovanolate, 5-hydroxy and doloacetate, B6 vitamins, which are really important for neurotransmitter synthesis. We'll run brain inflammation markers like quinolinate and picolinate, which are very helpful for brain inflammation. So if you wanna dive in deeper with myself or colleagues of mine, feel free to click below schedule. And if you're enjoying this content, let me know what you think. Let me know what's worked for you. And I look forward to helping y'all out. You guys have a phenomenal day and we'll talk soon. Take care, bye.